Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenncarcollection.com. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. You're looking at the 2023 BMW M2. And this is not a car from a dealership. This is actually a press car from BMW North America. So special thanks to BMW Corporate for believing me and giving me the M2 press car. So what you're looking at is a Brooklyn gray example. I think it looks really beautiful in this color. This car looks much better in person than it does in the pictures. I know a lot of people don't like the looks. I actually like it. And I'm gonna show you a couple profiles here where I think it looks really good. I think first of all, it looks very good from this side profile. Now, starting price on this car, base price is $62,200. You can get a six-speed manual or an eight-speed automatic. Now, you have some body cladding here, but obviously it's got to be wider to fit the tires. I like the M2 emblem in the back. When I had my E90 M3, I thought that M3 emblem on the trunk was just a little too small. Here, I think, is a great view of the car. I think this rear three quarters, it really looks great. Again, it's got that body cladding, but remember, it has to accommodate those big, wide rear tires. I like the wheels. Let me know what you think in the comments of the looks of the new M2. It's very distinctive, but I mean that in a good way. Again, I think this looks really good in person. It's a very distinctive car. I think the side profile looks great as well. Now, this car had the sunroof. I'm surprised for a press car. I would pay the $2,600 and get the M carbon fiber roof. Now, it's a very practical car. If you buy an M2, you're probably going to drive it every day, so it needs to be practical, right? This trunk is, is plenty big to fit two sets of golf clubs, or in my case, my hockey bag. You got a really large opening, and the trunk goes deep. I can probably fit, honestly, two hockey bags in there. Now, let's take a look at the interior. Love these seats with the Vanasker leather. I had that in my M340. Love the M colors here makes you feel like you're driving something special. Very comfortable seat. Now the steering wheel looks a lot like my M340, except you have the two red M buttons that you can program your features for chassis, sport, steering, brakes. To open the hood, you just do the latch there. Now this is a two pedal car, because this unfortunately is the eight speed automatic. Hopefully at some point we'll get to drive the six speed manual. Let's take a look at the engine. So you do the latch twice, and there is no secondary latch when we get to the hood. I think BMW tried to make the interior a little more special by having some bits here and there, and I think they did a pretty good job. So now we're gonna open up the hood, and what you get is a detuned, so you get a six-cylinder turbo. It's a detuned version of the M3 M4, so it's the S58 engine. Now in this car, it makes 453 horsepower, 406 foot-pounds of torque. So about 50 horsepower less than the M3 M4 competition and about 70 foot-pounds of torque less. But believe me, as you'll see, because we're gonna drive it in a few minutes, this car moves. Now, if you opt for the M driver's pack, the top speed of 155 miles per hour is raised to 177 miles per hour. All right, so we're gonna go look at the interior now. I'll show you all the features of the car, and then we're gonna take it out for a very spirited drive. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And let's go look at the interior. All right, so now we're inside the M2. This steering wheel looks very familiar, very similar to my M340i X-Drive. I love the carbon fiber paddles. I'm sure that's optional. You have your M1 and M2 buttons. Let's start the car, because that's what you want to see. The start button is right here. And you see we have different instrumentation now for the 2023 models. It even shows there's one passenger in here. Red means it's empty. Green means there's somebody sitting there. And I believe with the seatbelt on as well. Now, if we put it in reverse... I still never like these shifters because I still struggle <laughs> getting them which way is reverse, which way is manual. So you get a pretty decent uh, camera here. I don't believe there's a 360 camera. You could do parking sensors only, shut off the camera. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. You got even your climate control buttons here, and that's pretty cool that you can do it from the screen. You lost the hard buttons. What I liked about my M340i is I had eight buttons here. I can program whatever I want. You can't do that here. Uh, you have your rear and defrosters and uh, you can do some simple basic functions there. This is the same for the iDrive. You can go to the home button, you can go to media, you can go to a lot of different stuff here. Uh, you can bring up your map, your navigation, parking sensors, you can shut off the automatic stop. We're not gonna shut off traction control, stability control since it's a press car. We have your USB port here. I always had something plug in there so I wouldn't get any water on it. You got a nice carbon fiber trim here. So this is optional, I believe, the carbon fiber trim. I had that on my M2. Uh, this exhaust button so we can make the exhaust loud or soft by pressing that button. 
Uh, we can set up a lot of things in our menu here. So what we want to do is we're going to do the engine and Sport Plus. See, see, look, it's efficient. It's nice and quiet. Sport, a little louder. Sport Plus, the loudest. Chassis, I'll put on Sport. Typically, if I was doing this as a daily driver, I'd put on Comfort. Uh, we'll put the steering in Sport and I'll do the brake on Sport. And now we have the traction control. That, I believe, is an option. We can see how much traction control we want with our car. This is not our car, so we'll we'll probably keep it on. All right. I'm not a big fan of uh, the electronics. The 8 Series has this too. The M5 has this too. My car was counterclockwise as well, at least on that one side, and I wasn't that crazy about it, to be honest. Okay, but you're watching my video because you want to uh, see me drive it. All right, we're starting off in the new M2. I haven't driven this gen of M2, but I'm getting really excited to drive it. As you know, my whole YouTube channel, everything started with my 2016 M2, Long Beach Blue six-speed manual. Now this one is an automatic, but you could get it in a six-speed manual. And it's a torque converter, not a dual clutch. Wow, this drives really well. This car is fast. My M2 was not that fast. This car, especially with the automatic transmission, is a fast car. We're gonna stay on the brakes just to get some grip on this turn here. Apex is when you see the end of the turn. Downshifts are pretty good. I mean, this is probably the best torque converter automatic I've used. There's a really good heads up display. I'm sure there's a way you can make it brighter but the numbers are real clear what gear you're in. So yes, there are a lot of electronics keeping me in the turns there, but this is a modern car. I really like this car. Wow, I may have bought an M2 as my new daily driver. That's how good I think this car is. All modern cars now are fast, but this almost feels, you know, honestly, I think this is a better M3. And I felt that way when I had my 2016 M2. I felt it was a more fun, uh, smaller version, like two thirds, three quarter version of the M3. And I think I do here. And if I didn't need a back seat, and you can fit people in the back seat, this car feels, you know, I'd have to drive it back to back with the M3. But if you don't do that, M3 has an extra 50 horsepower. I think it's 503. And again, I almost bought an M3 for my new daily driver, and I probably would have if uh, I could find the right color and options I wanted. Handling is really good. It's really alive. Now the M3, I think, probably realistically, if you compare them back to back, is faster because it's the X Drive now got all wheel drive. This to me seems faster, and again, I'm not driving them back to back than the M4 rear drive manual, and maybe because obviously the manual transmission is not as fast as this eight speed auto. So it's not a dual clutch. We're not driving a dual clutch car. We're driving uh an eight-speed torque converter auto. All right, so now the turns are gonna get twisty, just like when we started. They're gonna get tighter and tighter until we give this back to uh, BMW. And special thanks to BMW for, again, for uh, giving me this press car for 30 minutes. I really appreciate it. All right, so now we're in seventh gear. We're gonna go down to six. This is an eight-speed. Top gears, to me, just feel like they're overdrive. Fifth. Now there's a lot of off camber turns here. So it's a really good test of the handling. Parts have such thick gate pillars now for safety because if they roll over, the roof has to support it. The only way the roof can support these heavier cars now is to have that real thick A pillar. So if you drive an old car, or even an E46 M3, you won't have an A pillar that's as thick as this. We're gonna drive in an efficient now, and we're gonna put everything in comfort, and we're gonna go back in automatic mode. So what you do is you just keep pressing to the right, so the right, it'll keep toggling between manual and automatic. Wow, this was a blast. I would buy the M2, no doubt. Uh, if I didn't need, if I only had people in the back seat some of the time, or I had kids in baby seats and stuff where you really want the four door, I had two kids in baby seats and an E90 M3, so it was a four door M3. The M2 wouldn't be ideal for that. So I can tell you, uh, if you can get away with not having four doors, I would buy this car over the M3. 